He's the NFL's youngest head coach to win a Super Bowl. I'm Mike Tomlin, I'm head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. A field general on an off-field mission that recently stole his heart. And I'm a slave stealer. The man, without a losing season during his 11 years in Pittsburgh, wants to help rescue children from enslavement. Leave it to a head coach to call an audible at a press conference to announce that the Steelers are supporting an agency that rescues kids from sex trafficking. Uh, we're a group made up of former uh, law enforcement, former Navy SEALs. I've got several of my operators here today. Uh, we work with law enforcement to go undercover in this dark, dark world. You initiated that. What was the turning point, Mike, to be involved? It, it didn't take long to, to, to get there. Um, all you have to do is be exposed to what Tim and company are doing at OUR. Um, I spent some time praying about it and thinking about it, uh, as did my wife, and bring OUR out here and spend a couple of days with us as a football team. You know, God would take a hold of that and provide direction for all of us, and the relationship has grown. What is it about Operation Underground Railroad that you admire? They are a nonprofit organization that provides latitude to have partnerships with other governments and really eliminate a lot of red tape. And that's what you got to do, man. We're trying to rescue kids in the sex slave industry. These are guys that are kind of cut like I'm cut. They see a problem, and then they go about solving it. Action takers, or those are the type of guys you want to come alongside and, and pray for and help. How have the players responded, and how have you seen their lives impacted by it? From a professional football standpoint, there's so many things, initiatives, and, and causes going on that in some way potentially divide someone in some corner of the room, and the minute we presented them and the work that they're doing to the team, it was something that unified the group. Every man was moved, and it's been 100% participation, different from man to man, obviously, and uh, that's a beautiful thing. Describe that Steeler football brand and reputation, no nonsense and tough, that doubles up as a requirement for what it would take for any of us to rescue the enslaved and the trafficked. The same principles that, that we live by as an organization, as a football team, you know, our brother can depend on us. We don't make excuses. We believe in taking action as opposed to making statements. Those things embody OUR and what they're doing. And this is God's work. This is not the work of men. The pieces fit too perfectly together. They're black and gold, determined years ago before they met us. They're slave stealers. That's their motto. And, um, you know, we've adopted that motto. What was the one thing that swiveled your heart? That it may happen in other countries, but we as Americans, sadly, are the number one consumers worldwide. We drive the market, American citizens. That struck me uh, like a lightning bolt, and, and that probably uh, was as impactful in terms of me um, having a strong desire to take action as anything. Um, Tragic, heavy, heartbreaking. It's too tough for some to look at, but for you, why is an apathetic response unacceptable? It is tough for me to look at, but I also know that's one of the reasons why you got to look at it. And that's one of the reasons why it pushes you to action. As difficult as it is to fathom, it's probably just as tough not to take action once you've crossed that bridge. Speak to me as a father of three that includes one daughter. Yeah. How and where does that hit you the most deeply as a dad? You know, there was a specific story about a young Haitian kid. His dad's been searching for him for a long time. It connected to me. In this job, I work late hours from time to time. And if I get home late at night, I might poke my head in every bedroom. It's just what you do as a parent. I couldn't imagine a child not being in one of those bedrooms. It's unimaginable. And yet, and still, there are thousands and thousands of parents that deal with that reality on a day-to-day -day basis. No child, Mike, should lose their childhood. Yeah. And no question, no question. Sex trafficking industry profits, 32 billion a year. The rescue then, to get it at its core, seems twofold. Go find and rescue those children. And then face another thing that's almost as difficult, the willingness to pray for a change of heart in the culprits. Can you do that? I didn't think that I could. It's interesting that you ask that because the more I educate myself to this issue, I can answer yes to that now because you realize that prayer is what's needed.
The problem is so large, so widespread, it's much bigger than we all would like to realize. The chief component has to be prayer. Prayer reaches to the heart, and Mike, it seems to me, children and women are held hostage because of the enslavement of others. From your experience, what and who frees you from your own personal imprisonment? <laughs> You know, that's an interesting question. I get challenged in ways that keeps my confidence properly placed. <laughs> you know, there's so much in our business that, that fosters real humility. It has fostered my personal relationship with my Lord and Savior. I just think about the grace. It is just an unbelievable thing. And that's one of the reasons why it pushes you to action. 